Hello everyone and welcome to this short video. This is Ed. I just wanted to drop by and talk about the fact that no matter how many times Supernote comes out with something new, they never cease to surprise and amaze me. And this latest beta is exactly that. And I know that uh, you probably heard me talk about the Digest before. You've probably seen some different things on it. It was always kind of a work in progress, I thought. It was a really cool idea. You could do handwritten notes within EPUBs and PDFs, and you could then export those as PDFs themselves, and they were tied to specific pages, but they were never quite finished. And the RADA team has been talking over the last year about working on the digest and making that a truly powerful function. And I think they finally have done that in a way that I don't think any of us expected. And quite frankly, it's not just the digest. They actually took the time and considered what this would look like within the notes. And then they created this idea of text notes within your notes. So something similar to what Books has done with their AI text conversion and Remarkable, quite frankly, has done in their kind of inline adding text feature. But this is a whole nother way of thinking about that. You can do it that way and you can do it the same way they do it, or you can do it the Supernote way, which is really different and kind of interesting. So right now, what I'm going to show you here is what that looks like. The new digest has some new features that you'll be able to see. So you've always had sources, although they didn't call those sources before. Now you have this new thing called categories. So sources are what books you will find your digests in. Wherever you added an actual annotation, not the markup, but the annotations, that's going to show here. And you're going to be able to see that in real time. This is PDF and EPUBs. Now what's changed is you can now add categories. So within this, you can actually go to categories and you'll see I've got uncategorized. So I can go down here just like with the to-do app and change and add new categories. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of things that are just different and you still get to see all of your uncategorized items. So for the sake of this demo, we'll go ahead and do a new category. We'll call this test category. And then we'll let that recognize. We'll say, okay, I didn't correct the actual thing yet, <laughs> but so now you've got your test category and within this, you can add anything you want for this. So you can add in a bunch of different things as far as digests go. Now, I don't know that I would just sit here and add digest, but you could. You could add handwritten comments or notes, maybe a journal, and then later insert that somewhere else. I'm still getting used to this, but I think it's something very important to take a look at. And then you can rename and delete from here as well. Now, one thing I do want to show, though, is let's go back and let's find, let's go to our uncategorized. So we'll go back here and you'll see our sources. Matter of fact, let's go back to our sources. And we'll go here to JB Glossinger's book that I've done some different things on. And we will look at his specific note. So right now you'll see that I've added something in. Now, what's really cool here is there are multiple ways now. Before, this was just a very static text box. There was no cog wheel here. So this slider is new. And when you kind of hit the end of the page, you hit the end of the page. So you had this block, and then that's all you had. You had nothing else. Now you can handwrite, and you can expand that page by using the slider. You also have keyboard input. So if I wanted to use my Bluetooth keyboard, I could do that. But what's even more interesting and cool is up here at the top, you have this edit feature. Now edit lets you actually edit within the, the actual selection. So let's say that I wanted to put some text before or after this, I can do that. So let's go ahead and we'll just say, We'll do a couple of returns and we'll say, this is a really good point. And we'll let that recognize. And there we go. 
Now, when I hit done, what's really cool about this, and I'll show this later, is that it's in the annotation itself now. So it's in the actual with the text. And you could italicize this. They haven't quite got it where you can do different parts and different font choices. It's like everything's in the one text box. But you could still do some different things here. And maybe you put a note saying, you know, original quote, put that there, and then put really good point or notes, whatever you want that to be. So now we have the handwriting. So we can say, hello, this is a test digest entry. And we've got that. Now we can go to our keyboard. Let's go to our keyboard here. Now for this, what we can do is I can use the handwriting keyboard or I can use the on-screen keyboard or, and I'm gonna go ahead and try and do this here. I can set my Bluetooth keyboard here and let me turn on my Bluetooth. So I set my Bluetooth keyboard. I've told it I wanna use the super note and now I'm gonna go ahead and put my cursor back in here and then I'm gonna go ahead and type something. Hello. Here is a test of the writing with a keyboard. And there is almost zero latency here. It is moving way faster than it used to. Of course, I do have some spelling errors here, so excuse that, that's operator error. But this is cool. Now, what you have, and you'll notice this tells me that I've got my Bluetooth keyboard attached. And then I can turn that off. And when I do, you're going to see that that went away. I'm going to go ahead and turn off Bluetooth for now. Now I've got my handwriting. I've got my typed annotations if I want them. And I have anything I added to this text. So what we'll do is now we will go to a note. So let's just start a random note. Start a new note. And we'll go ahead and we'll just leave it what it is, which is not how I normally do things, as most of you know. What's really cool about this is the idea that they really thought through, and you'll see here in the note that you have this text icon. And from here, you can do a lot of different things. We'll get to that in a minute. But right now, I'm in my note. I want to go ahead and create a heading. So I'm going to put new test digest and i'm going to go ahead and circle that like i normally would and you'll see i get my normal contextual toolbar here but when i go to the ellipse you're going to notice recognize as text or recognize as digest those are two new features and recognize as text is what we're going to do in this case and this is going to change that and allow me to move it around. I can change the size. I can decide if I want it to be bold or italics, if I want it to be centered. A lot of different things you can do from here. And I'm going to leave it as it is right now. And then I'm going to tap out of it. And I'm going to circle it again. And now I can do all of my normal functions. I can turn this into a link. I can turn it into a keyword. I can turn it into a heading, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to turn that into a heading. And now what you'll notice is just like you would have if you did the handwritten headings, you now have the ability to create very clean and crisp text table of contents. Now they haven't done the subheadings yet or anything like that that books has done so it's not a full outline yet and i don't know if it's going to export to pdf we'll test that at some point but the idea is you have that flexibility if you want to go through that extra step of recognizing the text and then making it bold or not bold underlining it whatever you want to do with it then you can do that and make that your heading but it's really a neat functionality now, what's even cooler, though, is this idea that you can take and go to this text line. And now when I press, I get a text box that I can do all of those same things with. And from this little plus button, I can go to my digests. And what you'll notice here is it's the last thing that you did is going to show up. You can also search your digests if you wanted to search for a keyword. 
course, it's the last thing we did. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert that. And again, what's really neat here is I can decide not to have that be bold. It's exactly as it was before. I can add things to this. So I can go with my keyboard and I can say, here is writing input. And there it is. I can choose to go to the virtual keyboard and type it in that way. I can go back to the handwriting keyboard or I can switch over and you'll notice down here that there's going to be a little, oh, I'm not in there, a little EN that pops up. That EN means that I have my Bluetooth keyboard connected now. So I just have to make sure my cursor is still in there. And now I can say, here is a typing example. And look how fast that is. They've really done something with the Bluetooth latency to make this way better than it used to be. And so I can do all these things. Really, really cool. And then once I get out of this, I can go ahead and I can say, I can say hello, and I can continue my annotations. You can also and let's say we want this to be a separate digest entry. So let's go back. Let's circle this here. And let's say we want this to be a new digest entry. So we can say recognize as digest. And we won't go through this, but you can create that right from here. Pretty cool. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. We'll jump over here in just a second. I'll show you the app and what that interface looks like. Here we are in the Supernova Partner app, and I think it's really important. This is the Windows version, and right now this is available on Windows and on Android. So the Android app will show exactly the same way, and it's one way that Supernova is trying to unify the device and the apps. They tend to release on Windows and on Android first. I think it's a little bit easier for them to develop there and get some of the bugs worked out before they go into the uh, Apple ecosystem. They can also let Android users download directly and Windows users download directly. It's just a little bit easier for them. But what's cool here and what I want to draw your attention to is if you go over here to the right, you can click a new digest and you'll see I've already added a test category. You have your sources, you have your categories, and you have things that are uncategorized. Now, of course, I haven't gone through and categorized all of these things, obviously, and I've played around with a lot of different things to test out this functionality, even when it was the older digest. But what's really cool about this, if I click on this here, you're going to see this pop up and it gives me my source here at the top. It allows me to export from here if I want. But watch this. If I expand here and then I click here, I can live edit in the digest right now. Here is a digest entry from my keyboard. So I can do that there. And here I misspelled hello, here's a test, I can go in even down here and fix that. And this is going to then go back to my digest in my super note. Really cool. And then I can also see my handwriting. So think about that. I've got the original quote that I can edit or that I can add text to. I've got the handwriting and I've got the text. And then if I go and I export this, and I can export it into anything here. So let's just throw it on the desktop and go ahead and hit export. And then I'm going to open the file path. And right here, I get the original quote, tells me where it's from. It does not export, obviously, a hyperlink, but that's all in the app. I can navigate through there. You see the added text that I added right here, and you see the typed and written annotations. This is extremely powerful. It's something that you're just not going to see on any of these other platforms that I've seen. And if I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. I think that 
you know, the only way we can learn is to learn from each other. But that is just amazing. And everything that I create here carries over to the, to the device and carries back over to the Android app. It's a really good functionality. All right. Well, that's this quick video I wanted to do on the power of the new digest feature. Let me know in the comments what you think. This is, of course, in a beta. It's not something everyone's going to have access to right away. But I really think it's a much more elegant solution than what I've seen so far on the books platform. Now, again, I have only had the Note Air 4C for about a week, and I'm still learning that device. It had some of this functionality already built in. So it already had text boxes. It already had where you could change fonts and formats. But it's clunkier to do, and it's harder to do. Where I see the huge value in this tool is as a research tool. Starting with a PDF or an EPUB, highlighting sections, going back, adding annotations, adding text wrapped around the quotes that you're pulling, and then adding handwritten and typed annotations, exporting all of that into a note, and then continuing to write that out. If I'd have had that when I was doing my research and my dissertation, it would have been such a time saver. And one thing that I'm not showing here because I haven't had time to test it yet is you can actually scan with the mobile app a text and then pull that text directly in via OCR to a digest. So that way it even extends that even more. So if you were in the library or wherever you were, you can scan a piece of text, pull it in, and then add that to this growing digest that you can then pull into your notes. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day. Please like, subscribe, uh, check me out on Patreon everywhere. You'll see the links down in the description. If you have comments, questions, please add those below. And until next time, keep on moving forward, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you.